Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Digibro and Friends. Friends. Oh my god, I can see I can see myself in the television. Do you see in the camera I can see that oh it's picking god. up my reflection in the television. <laughs> so you can it's like a old school picture in picture. Yes. Yeah. It's an old old school pip. <laughs> welcome everybody. We are playing uh, um Star Fox Assault. As you can see, we are filming a CRT monitor. <coughs> um we are overloading all it, the Star Fox. It can't be helped is the only way I could des describe it. It's, what are we playing? Be thankful Brandon? for what you get. We are playing Star Fox Assault. How is, uh, how is this game? It's pretty good. Uh, it can't compare to Star Fox 64. That's just like the epitome of the best Star Fox I have literally ever never heard of this game. Never heard really? of it until now? This Star is my Fox first time. No, this what's particular wrong with you, Star Josh? Fox. Of course I've heard of Star Fox. No, you haven't heard of Star Fox? <laughs> By the way, it's important we all try to project our voices, because we are far from the microphone, Yes, of course! The The technical side of this particular video series is going to be pretty low. <laughs> um, I'll understand if people don't want to watch it. This is GameCube. This is actually worse than GameCube Yeah, this chats. is a bit lower. <laughs> At least we had a camera camera for GameCube Look at chats. that quality. This is better quality than that camera was. Is it really? That was like a yeah. shitty little... Pocket or practically pocket cam. Um, this is better quality, but it's filming a CRT, which is harder because the it's so bright. God, I love. And our microphone <laughs> setup is just line. ghastly. Better than GameCube chat, though. We had no microphone setup for that, I think. Or really? maybe it was that was a struggle. Or though. maybe it was my original mic. You had your first, like your first microphone, right? Which is a good one, but um. Nothing compared to this. I hope I can no, there, do it's, this. No, it's not... This was not like a gigantic leap up. Where it was leap? more like a... The kind of thing you'd only notice if you... You went up a stair? ...knew better. Yeah, I went up a stair. It was about a $300 <laughs> stair, but uh... That's a hell of a stair. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Nice. Okay. So this is the first level. And it's... In, like, the first time I played through this level, it was like a sensual overload. Like, I couldn't tell what was going on, really. And I was so not used to the... The detail and right, and which is what I um, the reason that this <laughs> that this television, the CRT, is in my room, is because we were downstairs and I happened to watch Brandon beating the final boss of this game, and it fucking blew my mind how awesome it looked because like, um, CRTs are are much brighter than um than normal than uh, than HD TVs, yeah. and. Uh, they're brighter. I think they have a higher refresh rate, right? Or something like that? I don't think it, it's a faster. different refresh rate. I don't think they it's use a faster. They use a different measurement. Yeah. In any case, uh, CRTs are team. bright and vibrant, and old games were made for them. And uh, those games don't look as good on HDTVs because they're, A, stretching the, the, the size of the picture, like, abnormally, and B, <coughs> the, they're not as bright, the HDTVs. So, um, I had heard a lot from a lot of, like, old school gamers that CRTs were totally the way to go when it comes to, like, old school games. Uh, in particular, any that looks really nice, they're always like, you gotta play it on a CRT or else it's just not the same. Yeah, the graphics quality changed from HDMI to the right. CRT from the, well, on these old games is, like, drastic. Like, it's so weird because you think of it like, um, cause it's, it's the difference between... Uh, pixels per inch and like size of the screen, right? Because I think a lot of people think of bigger TV equals bigger image, but yeah, that's not true. The CRT, this CRT oh, is yeah, pretty me, huge, I know <laughs> right? The CRT Fucking is pretty Buy. huge, and smaller. Like even though the resolution of this game is smaller, it looks better on this bigger TV than it would on a smaller HD TV. You know, like on a small HD TV, it would still look stretched because the pixels are being stretched, whereas on a big CRT, it's fucking beautiful. And like, I love this oh my god, this is straight up the Phantom Menace. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking madness. It's so dense. Every every scene is packed with so much detail. Actually, what this reminds me more of is Macross or uh, Robotech. You ever seen Macross? Yeah, I have actually. That's like, <laughs> the thing that I have seen that you mentioned. Um, do you remember <laughs> in the first episode when the Zentradi are like, Invading Earth, so and it's just like a million ships that are uh, that are attacking. Yeah, just like this. In fact, what would make it exactly like it is if one of the ships uh, got vaporized by a giant laser firing from Earth. 
Okay, so and my it literally happens right skills there. from Star Fox 64 do not transfer over as well in this game. The lasers are seemingly stronger in this game, and this game is a lot Jesus, less Jesus, you just destroyed like this big-ass ship, and you just fucking demolish it with a little gun. So, um, but what also impressed me more than just the colors on this is that this game is definitely 60 frames per second. And it looks, it looks incredible. It just, everything feels so fluid and fast and, like, gorgeous. And it's funny because, um, I, I watch a lot of YouTube analysts of video games where they always complain about how modern games have uh, lower frame rates and shit. Because... Uh -huh. They always say that they're trying to look more cinematic, but really it's because the hardware is badly optimized. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know how to make shit. So people always complain about it, but they never... What, what people do a bad job of, in my opinion, is if you're going to complain about something, offer an alternative. Like, show us why we should be mad. Because people talk about how, how, how mad they are. that like, oh, this game's not in 60 frames. This bullshit... But if you actually, like, showed me footage of Star Fox Assault in 60 <laughs> frames, and then were like, this is what your modern games should look like, I would shit bricks. Because yeah. I looked at this, and I was like, this looks better than any HD game that I can think of. Like, this game looks fucking amazing to me. Oh my god, I hate and, this guy uh, so much. So after seeing him fucking playing sleepy. that, I moved the CRT up to my room. Not an easy process, because that thing is heavy as shit. Um, I couldn't carry it, but Shade did very easily, and it made me realize <laughs> that I am amazingly weak. <laughs> I am the weakest man alive. The smallest Shade is, I just don't picture him as being My favorite thing about that story is that I heard Shade's side, and uh -huh. Shade lifted it up, and he's just like, it's only 80 pounds. <laughs> it's, yeah, well, I lifted it, and I went, oh my god, it's like 80 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> like... I, I don't know. I couldn't. I I could lift it, but I could not carry it. And uh, Shade just made it look really easy. And I was like, Oh, I am. I have let myself go. <laughs> like to an extent, I didn't even. I knew I'd let myself go, but goddamn. It was that. Uh, God, I'm that epiphany not moment. Good as the, that I'm eureka just not moment. As good as I fucked game. up, guys. Well, how many times have you played this game? Um, I've beaten it three times now. How many times have you beaten Star Fox 64? Ooh, <laughs> well into the double digits. Uh, I'd probably say 20 to 30 times. So Jesus. there's a chance you could get as good as the, at this game as you are at Star Fox. If you yeah, there's a game. chance, but I feel like Star Fox 64 lends itself to the replayability, whereas this mm -hmm. one's like more linear and just you know where you're going. I feel like I can speedrun this game. Like mm -hmm. I, I can optimize a lot of things, definitely. So Crystal's on your team now, yeah? Yeah, because Star Fox Adventures was canon, so this is the game that takes place immediately after that, and so they had to go back to their roots. But, <laughs> they like, had to. Could Crystal even fly a... That's one thing that I don't know. <laughs> I'm just like, she should be on a dinosaur or something. Right, she have like something why else. can... Because didn't they fly a, a, tri like a, a, ser a pterosaur in space at the beginning of... Star Fox uh, yeah, Adventures? Yeah, I think she gets shot down. I haven't played that game. I've just watched footage. Yeah, I've, I played it a bunch when I was a kid, but... That was the kind of thing where, like... I feel like if it wasn't just... If it was named something else other than Star Fox, if it wasn't branded as Star Fox, it would be... Right, well, it better. wasn't supposed to be Star Fox. Yeah, it was supposed to be uh, Dinosaur Planet, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And then they rebranded it, but it was like... Uh, oh, God, Falco can die here. Like, one of those things where, as a kid, I just didn't... Uh, like, I didn't wrap my head around the idea that it was, like... Yeah, this is completely fucking different. This is not Star Fox. Like, it was so weird to me, because, um... As a kid, I didn't have a lot of perspective on, like, the whole franchise of a game. Like, I knew Star Fox 64. Uh -huh. I knew Star Fox from Smash. So when Star Fox Adventures came out, it was like, this is nothing like Star Fox 64, but maybe Star Fox isn't just one thing. Maybe it's, like, multiple <laughs> things. Oh, and then gosh. later on, I hear other people on the internet talk about it, and everyone, like, pretty much universally pans... Star Fox Adventures, because, oh, yeah. like, not just because it's a bad Star Fox game, but because it's just a terrible video game in general, like, it's just not very well designed. <laughs> um, it's got, like, a lot of just asinine bitch work, and, uh, it's confusing. It's sort of like, like, it, like a would-be Zelda clone, but one that is not fun to play like Zelda is. Yeah. Because I know, um, Victor played a lot of it as a kid, and he could never beat it, just because it was, it would just get so frustrating, like... <laughs> 
It's the kind of game where you'll like you'll go into an area and they'll be like, you have to find four of these things, and then you have to spend like an hour finding these four things, and you're doing the same thing over and over again. And it's like, oh man, this is this is lame. There's a great JonTron video about it. I think I've seen, seen that, that video. Yeah, Stairfax temperatures, as he called it. Ah, uh, so classic. Okay, so. <laughs> My first, like, introduction to, like, Star Fox was 64, but, like, I definitely, when I first saw Smash, I just knew Star Fox from that game. Like, really, that's, like, all I knew. Right. And so I was just like, I'm gonna become a Star Fox, man. I'm gonna become the best Star Fox ever. And I was actually really good. And I beat some kid in Circuit City. His brother gave me a bunch of coupons as a reward for beating his brother. Like, right when Melee came out, this was, like, the thing. And, uh, after that, I felt like... I betrayed Star Fox by switching to NES, which is funny because Star Fox is like uh, Fox himself is like top tier in melee, right. and NES is going the exact opposite direction. And like <laughs> years have passed, and I can't play as Fox anymore. Fox is like top tier in like all the games, right? Uh, no, just melee. Oh, really? Uh, I think in '64, it's like every character is extremely viable. I think Captain Falcon is the best person to use in '64, but uh, I Not use NES in that too. Oh yeah, Kirby too. Kirby's pretty good. Kirby's up tilt is what breaks him, but I feel like you can get around that easily. So, um, I, I feel uh, similarly yes. about Samus. Jesus. I had no idea what a Metroid game was until, um, because I, I, had, I had played Super Smash Bros. and Super Smash Bros. Melee. I had no idea who Samus was. And then, um, when Metroid Fusion and Metroid Prime came out at, like, the exact same time, then yeah. I played both of those. And it was funny because, like, again, this is a case where I didn't know what the other games were like. So with Metroid Prime, everyone was like, oh my god, how can they make a 3D Metroid? <laughs> this is madness. And to me, it was just like, well, it's, it's Metroid. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, I'd never pl The only 2D one I'd played was Fusion, and I just kind of had the impression that it's like, okay, well, Fusion's on the Game Boy, so... The 2D Metroid is the mobile version, and the 3D Metroid is the console version. Like, that made sense <laughs> to me, you know. Well, because that happened a lot during the GameCube oh, yeah. era, where, like, they'd make... Like, like, like with Mario, you know, he during the N64 and, and uh, in GameCube eras, he transitioned to 3D, but then they kept making 2D Mario games on handhelds. Oh, yeah. I don't know what it is. Like, handhelds always, to me, have had, like, just are criminally underrated among gamers. Like... Game Boy Advance was always, like, my favorite console, and I love, I think the 3DS is fantastic, the DS was great, like, there's so many great handheld games, and, like, no one talks about, about them. them. Yeah, that's really overshadowed. I yeah, think, like, you think you'd learn from your Uncle Andros. <laughs> this entire of hand it, things for weak spots is really bad, and it runs in the family. I think part of it for, like, modern times, like, with YouTube culture and stuff like that, it's just that it's really hard to take footage from handhelds. Yeah, so yeah. Not, a not a lot of people are of, willing to try. Right, well, because a lot of people now nowadays find out about games through, like, Let's Plays and shit, and so, you know, it's harder to find Let's Plays and stuff of, uh, of handheld games. Although there seems to be plenty of people who have, like, capture cards for them. But it's usually, like, they already know that they are a YouTuber by then, you know? Yeah. yeah. Someone like, uh, like, Tamashi Hiroka, who does all the Pokemon videos, I think she has a 3DS capture card. I've seen some of her videos. My friends got super into, uh, Pokemon Showdown, and then I started, like, looking up a bunch of Pokemon shit on YouTube. Yeah, Tamashi Hiroka's the only one I've really watched. I... She also has, like, a couple of non-Pokemon videos that I thought were, like, really fantastic. And, like, all her Pokemon stuff is great, but it's also, like, I, I, I don't, like, actively follow the videos because I always remember, like, I don't give nearly enough of a fuck about yeah. Pokemon to watch all this. Because she puts out a video every week, and it'll be, like, whatever inane topic about, like, she, she I followed her on Twitter for a while, and, like, she made it very clear that she was mostly making videos out of obligation, like... Every week she has to come up with something for a video. Oh, yeah. Cause... So, like, if the concept is completely asinine, then it's just because she knows it's asinine. <laughs> but she has to get a video out every week. And her fans don't care. They don't notice that it's asinine, you know. Which they just want to see her. Right. Well, they, they just want to see Pokemon videos. And it, it trips me out because, like, I could totally get away with doing that. And I just don't even think to. Like, t to me, it's like, why would I make a video like that, you know? But my fans would probably not care. There's, hey, it's content. Yeah, Sweet. You, you know, you made a video. You made a new video. You did good. By all means, make top ten lists about anime. I will watch them all. Somehow we beat it. The Aphroids. Oh my god. 
This is like my least favorite Star Fox villain overall, though. I have to say, uh, in Star Fox Command, you fight Anglerfish as the main bad guy. No. Anglerfish. Yeah, it's Star Fox sixty four and Star the original Star Fox. It's all monkeys as the bad guys. I see. Yeah, it's a huge. It's a, it's kind of racist. Never even noticed it's that. really like you're committing genocide. Hey, I don't like monkeys, so fuck them. I have a ton of friends that don't like monkeys. I don't even understand what the, the like the yeah, stigma yeah. is. Um, there's actually an episode of the biggest problem in the universe about monkeys. That's one of the problems. One of the biggest problems in the universe. Maddox hates monkeys. Well then, this game is for you if you hate monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's it for this episode of Ninja Holy Pro shit, Pals. I got the medal. You did it!